Hello everyone, welcome back. Today is a really fun day. A friend of mine just bought a new home and it came with a really awesome garden. So she asked if I would come check it out. I'm gonna be looking at the state of the soil, maybe if there's any weeds established, the state of the beds, and maybe do a little bit of garden planning. Okay, so this is my friend Amanda. So Amanda, tell me what you know about the garden. So when did you actually move in? And tell me like if you know what they grew or how they built it or anything like that. We moved into this home two months ago and I don't know a whole lot about the garden other than the fact that the people that owned the home before us owned it for two years. So it is fairly new and they grew peppers, tomatoes, green beans, and strawberries. I don't know what varieties of any of those they had, but that's what I was told. Okay. So what are like your goals? What are you going to try to grow this year? I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm a little nervous because this is my first time actually gardening. So I have... I'm, and I'm also pregnant, so I, I don't want to do too much, uh -huh. but I feel like I definitely want to just focus on things I know we'll eat. So, like, we eat a lot of tomatoes. Um, I don't know how hard Brussels sprouts are, but those are my favorite <laughs> vegetable of all time. So, if I could <laughs> have Brussels sprouts, that would be awesome, but I don't know anything about growing them. So, um, and then, like, zucchini or cucumber, um, I don't have a whole lot of things that I know for sure I want to grow, but those are kind of the bare minimum, I guess. Yeah, okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do like an assessment of the garden. We're going to kind of start outside in because there's a lot of really good things that I see, a lot of positives. Um, I see some established weed growth, so we're going to talk about that, and I'm definitely going to check the soil. So let's do a little tour of the garden. So here is her garden. She has 13 raised beds and there's a lot of really good things that are already here. Number one is the fence. Uh, we get a lot of animals in this area, especially deer, so that's gonna help a ton. We, she is right by a main road, so that also I think will help keep out some of the larger animals, maybe, maybe not. She also has a water source nearby, which is great, so you're not having to haul a hose. I am, as I'm walking, feeling some soft spots, so that tells me that there's some, probably, moles in the ground. So I don't know how far down this fence is buried. I don't know if they put any, um, like, hardware cloth underneath the beds to prevent moles from tunneling up. This rock will help a little bit. But it does have a big, wide gate, so you can get big wheelbarrows in. So there's a lot of really, really good things that are going on in the garden already. I see... Like I said, 13 raised beds, and they are in different heights, which is great if you wanna grow things like potatoes or root vegetables that need to go down a little bit deeper. So now that we're in the garden, there's a couple things that I see, and the main thing is I'm seeing quite a bit of established weed growth, and a lot of these are perennials. So it looks like they did lay down a weed barrier, um, but yeah, they're just we're still having quite a bit of weed growth. So you can pull them out by hand, you can use a broadleaf herbicide, um, around the edges of the bed before your garden gets established. But in the actual beds themselves, we're not gonna wanna use those herbicides because they can linger in the soil and then affect our plants that we plant in the raised beds. And this weed growth isn't always a bad thing for the soil itself. It's still adding life to the soil, but they do cause problems in the way that they compete for nutrients and they compete for space with the plants you're trying to establish. So there is gonna be quite a bit of work she needs to do in getting the weeds out of these beds before she plants. So now we're gonna look at the actual state of the the soil itself. Now I don't know exactly what they use, what mix. It feels to me like they use quite a bit of topsoil and I see that the soil has settled quite a bit because the level has fallen so we definitely need to add a little bit more. Um, the soil does not feel super compacted to me but I don't feel a lot of organic matter in the soil so it's a very light color. Um, it probably has mm, I feel like the consistency is a nice loamy like consistency which is what we want. Um, I feel like it'll hold moisture well, but we definitely want to add some organic matter to the soil in the way of like compost, um, peat moss, coconut core. Um, compost is really going to be the best bet for something like this. So here's another raised bed, and I can see they've added things like um, eggshells to the bed, which is great because over time that will add um, things like calcium as it breaks down. But the biggest issue I'm seeing is the weed growth, and that's probably going to be your biggest um, headache when it comes to the garden this year year is just trying to suppress a lot of these very established weeds. So using like a hand spade, you're going to want to dig down as far as you can to get as much of that root out as possible. But the good news is because a lot of these beds need to have more soil um, and, and material added, we can use that to our advantage and help suppress some of that weed growth. So you're going to want to add 
quite a bit of compost to the beds um, or a raised bed mix, whether it's homemade or store-bought. And then we're gonna wanna mulch really heavily this year. So you can mulch with an organic matter, with something like pine straw. You have quite a bit of pine trees around, so you might be able to find some of that pretty easily. Um, with an untreated straw, you can use um, undyed like um, mulch, like hardwood mulch. Um, you can use leaves, there's um, dried grass, there's lots of different things that we can use for a mulch and that will help suppress some of this weed growth but it may take a couple seasons to really get a control over that, over those established weeds. So here is her strawberry bed and you can see this is a common issue with strawberries is that if you let them kind of spill over the side <laughs> they will root and establish everywhere so all along the side she's got strawberries growing in the ground so they can almost act like a weed really. Um, so the good news is, is they look really healthy. Strawberry season here will be, and I think, let's see, two months maybe, month and a half. So you can dig some of these up. You can transplant them to other parts of the garden. Um, you've got plenty of space, you know, acreage to, to transplant, start a new strawberry bed. Um, but you definitely want to kind of keep this in check because they can definitely spread, which maybe you want that. <laughs> it's just going to be, make, it's going to be hard to walk. Um, so this is something to keep in mind if you plant strawberries, that when they send those runners out, if they get onto the ground, they will establish and root um, and definitely create like a ground cover. So to be careful um, when growing strawberries, keep that in mind. <laughs> So now let's talk a little bit about garden planting. So we are standing in the north end of the garden. So as a rule, you wanna plant your taller stuff in the north end so that it doesn't cast a shadow on smaller growing plants. So you said you wanna do, tell me again. So tomatoes would be great, probably a type of green bean. We would do potatoes. Um, garlic, but that's not till later. Um, we could do squash, maybe cucumbers or zucchini. Okay, so I know that the tomatoes last year, we can see kind of the remnants of them were planted down at that south end of the garden. So we want to do a little bit of crop rotation because around here it's really common for us to get fungal issues, fungal diseases on tomatoes and those can linger in the soil. Mm -hmm. So anything in the nightshade family, so tomatoes, potatoes, eggplant, you want to avoid planting those in the same spot within about three, maybe four years if you have a big enough garden to do that and you do. So instead of planting the tomatoes down at the south end this year, you might want to move those to a bed. So you tell me, I think in this one over here there was uh, beans peppers. and peppers. Yeah, and then beans here, and then maybe beans behind us. You can see kind of like where the trellis system was. So those would be a good place to grow anything that was a, if it's a heavy feeder. So potatoes, tomatoes are a fairly heavy feeder um, because those green beans are going to add nitrogen in the soil. So this would be a good place to kind of rotate and plant those tomatoes this year. Okay, and for the vining things, cucumbers, the melons, if you want to do um, like winter squash or things like that, some of these longer raised beds would be perfect for those because there's a lot of space in those. And you can even use those vining crops as like a living mulch to kind of grow around taller plants like peppers or even tomatoes. And it'll kind of help keep the soil cool, kind of like, you know, like the Three Sisters method, um, help keep the soil cool. It'll help suppress weed growth and it just basically gives you more space. So now that we have established kind of the main things that you want to grow, and where we're gonna grow them. Let's talk about some companion planting. So I always recommend growing some flowering herbs. Now, if you're gonna grow perennial herbs, we've talked about this before, yeah. perennial herbs like chives and oregano, they tend to really spread. So I would probably designate one bed to grow those perennial herbs in. Do you have like a favorite herb that you like to grow? I, I do love oregano. Okay. Yeah, and that is one that will like take over. Yeah. <laughs> so I would recommend kind of keeping that contained to one bed. But I love planting herbs that flower, um, annual herbs. So basil, um, dill is great for butterflies. So I love just kind of planting those all around the garden. And those are going to not only attract pollinators, but sometimes because they have such a strong scent to them, they actually will work to deter pests sometimes. They kind of confuse the sense of like specific things that they're looking for. So basil, for example, um, um, not only do the flowers attract like parasitic wasps that can attack the hornworms that you get on tomatoes, but um, you know because the hornworms are looking for specific plants, the scent of the basil can kind of help con or confuse them sometimes. So I would recommend planting some flowering herbs all around the garden and then just flower, annual flowers in general. So some of my favorites are marigolds. Um, they, are, they have some pest deterring qualities to them, but they're just pretty and they're easy to grow um, from seed. They just kind of take off. Um, French marigolds are my favorite because they actually stay pretty low. So they're not as tall as some of the other varieties. Um, let's see, cosmos are great because they'll reseed and sometimes you'll get several 
crops in one season. Mm -hmm. So any kind of annual flowering, uh, any kind of annual flower is going to be great to kind of companion companion plant around the garden because then we're going to attract pollinators, which we need for some of those um, vegetables. Definitely. And another thought too is you have a lot of established weed growth in the ground, but some of these weeds do flower and they'll attract insects too. So it's not always a bad thing to have some of these, we call them weeds, which sounds like kind of derogatory or like a negative thing. But some of these things like the purple dead nettle, they will, they are early attractions, early spring attractions for pollinators. So um, it just, you know, aesthetically, it's not always the most pleasing looking thing, but they do serve purposes in the garden. Um, it's just more difficult when they're actually established in the garden beds where you're trying to grow. But on that note, we were talking about space. Now Amanda has quite a bit of space. This is a good sized garden, especially for a first time gardener, for sure. Um, but one of the things um, we can do to create space is to grow vertically. Now it looks like there was some trellising system here, but we talked about maybe in the back adding some cattle panel trellises and this will allow her to grow some of those big vining crops up rather than out. And this will give you like a lot more space in the garden. So I think you said, what were the vining ones you wanted to do? Was it Cucumber. Cucumber um, what else melons. Is it melons. I don't think I said melons, melons. but squash. I'm, maybe squash. squash was, yeah, yeah, like squash. Yes. Yeah. So growing these things vertically will give you a lot more space. So I think there's some room to definitely do some cattle panel trellises um, in the back, especially. Okay, so I think we covered just about everything that you wanted to ask me. There's definitely quite a bit of work. We might have to do part two where I come back and help, help you actually weed. I don't know awesome. if you should be doing a ton of weeding <laughs> um, and actually get stuff planted. But if you have inherited a new gardener, if you're a new gardener, I thought maybe this would just help out, kind of give you some uh, tips for starting a new garden or where to, where to plant things or not to plant things. So thanks so much for having me out and well, for letting me film. Thanks for coming. Yes. Uh, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.